this is the Honor 200 and it's supposed to be a mid-ranger that beats all the other smartphones in this price category when it comes to their camera and especially when it comes to their selfie camera. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at uh, mainly the camera, the performance and some unique features that set this phone apart from other mid-rangers. So let's get right into that video. Alright guys, so I think that it's best that we start with the crazy camera system on the back of this device and also on the front. We have a triple camera system on the back, a 50 megapixel wide camera, 50 megapixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. There is also a 50 megapixel front camera which is insane for a mid-ranger. And here are a few sample photos and videos that I took with this device both with the back and with the front camera. And when it comes to the back camera you can get of course the best quality out of the main wide lens. Then the telephoto lens is slightly lower when it comes to quality and the ultra wide of course uh, loses the most details as, uh, as being 12 megapixels but I think that the ultra wide actually has the most accurate colors compared to the other two lenses and uh, when it comes to the selfie camera you really get a lot a lot of details when it comes to your selfies as well as a lot of customization when it comes to filters and how you look on camera so that's something great alright so the main selling point of this device here and its back camera is the partnership with Harcourt Studio which is basically a large studio based in France and it specializes in studio portraits, in professional studio portraits. I don't know about them, maybe you do, but basically uh, with this partnership, uh, Honor has implemented an AI powered algorithm to process uh, portraits in a different way. And you have three modes to choose from, which is uh, vibrant, color, and black and white. Each of these are giving a unique feel to your portraits. And here are a few examples of uh, portraits that I have taken myself. They look kind of nice, especially with the 50 megapixel sensor on the back camera. So you be the judge, tell me if you actually like these portraits and if you like the feel that each of these modes give. Still don't fool yourself that this is gonna be like a professional camera or anything like that, but it gets really close to it thanks to this AI powered algorithm. And speaking about the video quality, I am surprised to see that the main camera lens, the wide one, is actually super super stable and I'm impressed with the stabilization and the color accuracy that I receive from this camera. The details are also super on point and I'm really happy with how the videos turn out from it. That cannot be said for the telephoto and the wide lens because the quality kind of drops a lot when it comes to these two lenses and I don't really like the fact that uh, the video looks choppier, less saturated and there are also these modes which let you use two of the lenses simultaneously. The last time I saw that was on the Galaxy S21 Ultra that I owned before and it worked really really good but when it comes to this device I found out that it makes the videos kind of choppy and bad looking. Maybe it's because it reduces the frame rate due to heating. I'm not entirely sure but I don't really like uh, how these videos turn out. Plus they're capped at 1080p only so no 4K option here. But the regular 4K 30fps uh, video quality from the main wide sensor of this camera are just amazing and I totally recommend you buying it only because of that. And here is a sample of the front facing camera, 4K 30fps fortunately. I mean, I see a lot of devices having only 1080p and stuck with 30fps but here 4K at 30fps so I think the quality is okay. This is not a perfect lighting situation. The sun is starting to set and uh, we can see a little bit of a drop in, a, in the quality, but overall, I think it's fine. And by the way, guys, if you have found any value in this video so far, then I would really love it if you just hit that like button down below and subscribe to my channel as well. It helps me tremendously and I also read every single comment that you leave down there and I try to reply to each and every one of you. So thank you so much for sticking with me guys and let's proceed with this video. Speaking a little bit about the build quality of the device, I have a little bit of mixed feelings when it comes to the Honor 200. So one of the pluses is that this phone is pretty lightweight coming at 191 grams, but at the same time its back is super slippery here so if you're holding it in your hand there's, there is a high chance that you might drop it just like that. So I would advise you slapping a case on this bad boy here if you don't want to have some nasty accidents. When it comes to the build quality of the device, it appears that we have an aluminum frame, but all the rest of, the, of it is practically plastic, so uh, you don't have any high quality materials, uh, which is expected in this price range, but it is still a nice touch that they added this aluminum frame, as well as a slightly curved screen. Unfortunately, there is no screen protection when it comes to the glass itself, so no 
Gorilla Glass or any other shenanigans here, but at least you have a pre-applied screen protector, so that's something. There's absolutely nothing special when it comes to the screen besides it being a little bit curved, but you have your usual AMOLED 120Hz display like you can see on any other mid-ranger out there. The bonus points here is that this one is pretty big and pretty bright as well, coming at around 4000 nits of brightness. The viewing experience was top notch, especially when you are watching something like Netflix shows or just scrolling through YouTube. I mean, I think that it's a great device for your money when it comes to purely the display. So if, you're, if you want to use this phone entirely for consuming media, then you, you cannot really get better than that. Something unique about this phone that I found quite interesting is the positioning of the two dual speakers. There is one on the bottom and one on the top, but instead of it being on the earpiece, we have it straight on top here in the middle, which is quite interesting in my opinion, and it definitely does not block the sound when you're playing something. Furthermore, these speakers are super loud and clear, so that's a bonus point as well. Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 which is stuffed inside of this bad boy here is not one of the most powerful CPUs on the market, it's a newer mid-range CPU that recently came out and it's capable of quite a lot of things. I definitely did not experience many stutters with this device, especially when I was browsing through the internet, social media and such, but uh, there was one time when I was downloading a lot of apps simultaneously and then the phone started stuttering and slowing down a lot while also heating up quite a lot. So. There's something that you should keep in mind, it's not one of the best CPUs and it might heat up a little bit on you, but most of the times you shouldn't have almost any problems with it and when it comes to gaming it handles itself pretty nicely. So maybe some games like Watering Waves, Genshin Impact and other like super high intensive games are not going to work the best. You can still get around 30 to 40 FPS but if you don't crank down the settings the phone is gonna get super hot super quick and it's gonna degrade that performance even further. But games like Asphalt, for example, run just fine and similar games would run just perfectly fine. Stuff like PUBG, Call of Duty, Mobile Legends and of this sort. You shouldn't be having any problems when it comes to these games and the performance is pretty decent. And naturally when we are talking about performance we cannot not mention the battery life of this device and when it comes to that we have a 5200 mAh battery which is already way better than what the other phones would offer you. Besides, if we're not talking about one of these crazy ass big rugged phones, then there is no beating that. But when it comes to this device being this slim and uh, this compact when it's in your pocket, having such a large battery is a huge advantage and I was able to get up to two days of battery life and around 7 to 8 hours of screen on time with uh, medium usage like gaming and social media as well as some YouTube videos and stuff like that but there is also a 100 watt charging which unfortunately you don't get right out of the box you have to purchase that separately and I actually spent 50 euros just for this charger which is kind of insane but if you don't mind that and you can spend the money then get that 100 watt charger is definitely great and your phone is gonna be just up in around 30 to 40 minutes maximum. Speaking about the software of this device and we have a Magic OS 8 running under Android 14 and there are a few things that are different compared to other Android smartphones and other skins put on top of Android. Like for example the folders uh, on the home screen, they can be resized in a very unique way giving you a sense of personalization that you might not get from other Android phones. But there are also some really nice features on this skin, some really good customization of your OS on display. And another unique feature of this uh, phone would be that they actually copied the floating island from iPhone, so it's basically around your selfie camera where you can see some notifications or your music player playing in the background with some fancy animations and stuff like that. And once you click on it, of course, it opens the app. It definitely works on this device and I don't think that any other Android has that feature. So there are definitely some things that I do really enjoy about this device, but there are definitely some others that I kind of hate about it. But let me know what you guys think about this phone and uh, if you don't think that this is good enough, maybe you're gonna like one of these. So thank you so much for sticking until the end and have a wonderful day and week ahead from me. Bye bye.